America's biggest and most advanced aircraft carrier. The Gerald R. Ford has a giant problem. Why would the Navy invest in a state-of-the-art ship that's not fully functional? What exactly is going wrong with the cutting-edge technologies meant to launch and land aircraft more efficiently? With thousands of missions depending on these systems, can the Navy ensure the Ford will eventually meet its full potential? Well, to know this all, you have to stay tuned till the end. Gerald R. Ford is America's secret weapon for when diplomacy doesn't work. This aircraft carrier is the largest and most advanced ship ever made by the United States and arguably the world. It has more firepower than most countries' entire air forces. The Ford is the most powerful ship patrolling the world's oceans. However, there's a problem. Some of its high-tech features aren't working as well as they should. So why did the Navy invest so much in equipment that's not fully operational yet, and what's being done to fix it? The heart of the Ford's combat power lies in its ability to launch, recover, rearm, and refuel its approximately 90 aircraft. This process, known as cyclic flight operations, is how America's Navy projects power around the globe. A well-prepared aircraft carrier can run 24-hour flight operations for months without stopping. For example, the U.S. Theodore Roosevelt did this during the early stages of Operation Enduring Freedom, operating independently for over five months without resupply. The sheer firepower that a fully equipped aircraft carrier can bring to a conflict is massive. One carrier has more aircraft than about half of the world's air forces. Getting aircraft on and off the flight deck involves three main technologies. The first of these is the weapons elevators. These elevators are crucial because bombs for the aircraft are only assembled when needed for a mission. This reduces the risk of storing armed bombs on the ship. Deep inside the ship, there's an area called the bomb farm where sailors assemble bombs and missiles. Once these are ready, the sailors use weapons elevators to move the ordnance to the flight deck. There, other sailors rearm and refuel the aircraft, and then the pilot takes off for their next mission. Navy aircraft need a boost to get off the deck because they can't generate enough thrust on their own. This is where catapults come in. These catapults are crucial. They use steam generated from the ship's nuclear reactor to build up a lot of energy. When ready, the crew releases this energy to launch the aircraft, helping the pilot take off. Landing on the carrier involves a system called a resting gear. This gear includes cables laid across the deck. As the pilot approaches for landing, they lower a tail hook at the back of the plane. When the aircraft touches down, the goal is to catch the cable with the hook. Once hooked, a pulley system connected to an engine slows down and stops the plane safely. The engine is a hydraulic system that absorbs the shock and stops the aircraft quickly. The three-tiered system described has been used by the U.S. Navy since World War II. So why change something that has worked for generations? One major issue with these systems is time. Electro-hydraulic elevators can be slow. Also, each time an aircraft lands, the crew must adjust the arresting gear for each aircraft type, which slows down operations. Another problem is that the catapult puts a lot of stress on the aircraft because it delivers a massive jolt of energy instead of a gradual buildup. This stress can damage the aircraft over time. Adjusting the catapult for each plane's weight is also challenging. The Navy wants to make things faster and reduce stress on the aircraft, leading to less maintenance and lower costs. To achieve this, the Ford-class carriers have introduced new technologies. Among the 23 new technologies, the most important is the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. The ELLO or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System is a revolutionary technology and the first of its kind in the world. Unlike older catapult systems that rely on steam, ELS uses electricity and magnets. Here's how it works. When an aircraft is ready to launch, the ELS system calculates its exact weight using advanced software. Based on this weight, EMLS precisely determines the amount of force needed to launch the plane. Physically, ELS works by passing electricity through a series of magnets on the deck. This creates a magnetic field that propels the aircraft forward. The benefit for the Navy is significant. Each aircraft receives a customist launch force, which is much smoother compared to the older steam catapults that gave a sudden jolt. Moreover, EVAMLS requires thousands of feet less of steam and hydraulic piping compared to traditional systems, making it potentially easier to maintain and troubleshoot. This is a big advantage when it comes to operational readiness. Like its predecessors, the Ford-class carriers are nuclear-powered, 
At the heart of the ship's propulsion plant is a nuclear reactor that generates steam. This steam spins turbines to produce thrust and also generates electric power for the ship, including for the ENF OAS. Unlike its predecessors, the Ford-class nuclear reactor produces about 30% more power and operates much more efficiently. This is crucial because the carrier uses EMLS to launch and recover aircraft, requiring huge amounts of electricity. Previous reactors couldn't keep up with these demands, potentially causing delays in launching aircraft. In addition to the new EMLS catapult system, the Ford-class carriers also feature a revolutionary new arresting gear system known as Advanced Arresting Gear. AAG. This system has transformed how aircraft come to a stop. Unlike legacy systems that relied on hydraulic settings adjusted for each landing, AAG can automatically adapt to the weight of each incoming aircraft. AAG achieves this through the use of devices called water twisters. These devices are designed to precisely regulate the tension in the arresting wires that catch the aircraft's tail hook during landing. This automatic adjustment ensures that every aircraft, regardless of size or weight, can safely and efficiently land on the carrier deck. Inside the Ford-class carriers, large steel plates are housed in drums of water, forming the core of the Advanced Arresting Gear AAG system. These plates adjust the forces necessary to safely slow down landing aircraft. Compared to older hydraulic systems prone to leaks, AAG provides more precise and tailored recovery capabilities while requiring less maintenance and offering faster reset times. But the Ford-class carriers are not just about AAG and EMLS. They also feature a host of advanced technologies never seen before, such as the dual-band radar and sophisticated combat system suites. These technologies have had their share of challenges, including unique trials and difficulties to overcome. According to a recent report, both the EMLS and AG systems on the Ford class carriers frequently experience downtime due to hardware and software issues. For instance, the Department of Defense noted that position block sensors inside the rails of the EMLS system often fail, necessitating the replacement of all sensors to continue flight operations. There are ongoing design flaws at EMLS. One significant issue was the lack of a centralized diagnostic system to troubleshoot problems. Previously, technicians had to painstakingly trace faults locally, which was time-consuming and inefficient. To address this, the EALS manufacturer eventually developed and installed a centralized diagnostic system intended to quickly identify faults. The effectiveness of this new system is still being evaluated. In a recent report, it was noted that despite some hardware and software upgrades to the three advanced arresting gear AAG, systems currently installed on the Ford-class carriers, there has been little improvement in their reliability since the program began. There are also questions regarding why the Navy has not yet installed a fourth AAG engine. Initially, this decision was made to save costs, but it leaves the Ford as the only aircraft carrier in service with three engines instead of four. Adding a fourth engine would significantly enhance redundancy and help ensure continuous flight operations. However, the report did highlight some positive aspects. One notable achievement was the high number of flight operations conducted by the Ford in 2023. During its first actual deployment, which lasted approximately eight months, the crew successfully carried out 9,266 arrested landings. This number nearly equals the total number of arrested landings completed in the previous five years of service combined, which was 10,826. Looking ahead, despite its issues, the Ford-class carrier is guaranteed a future in the American fleet due to U.S. law, which mandates maintaining at least 11 aircraft carriers at any given time. However, the reported problems with the ENLS and AG systems still persist, while the number of launches and recoveries has significantly increased, the Ford-class carriers will not achieve their full potential until systematic hardware and software issues are resolved by the manufacturers. What do you think about this? Do let us know in the comment section below and for more such amazing videos do subscribe to our channel.